Recently, Interman has gained so much hype in this community with the construction of the Wallaby Belgium Mega and Islands of Adventure Jurassic Park coaster. And now Interman have decided to announce another four concepts over on their YouTube channel. And wow, I am impressed. So in this video, I will break down all of these models and I will also go into the impact that this could have on Interman's future and the industry as a whole. To start off with, I'm going to talk about the two new water coaster models. These are admittedly less unique, but they still look really cool. The first is the Ultra Splash, which is essentially a knockoff of the Mac Power Splash. But what is interesting is that it will utilise a single rail, which seems to be the running theme with these new Intamins, partly due to its more robust structure, which could help save on costs as less supporting is required. Another thing that I noticed is that this model will not utilise the new Intamin over the head lap bars, and instead a U-bar, which is an interesting change from their current water coasters, but it actually allows the boats to be more open, so it makes more sense. While the experience itself is nothing groundbreaking, Visually, this coast looks amazing, with the two beautiful spikes. I can actually see many water parks, especially Asian ones, getting these, as they look like they'll fit in well with water parks, and many Asian water parks seem to be adding water coasters into their parks. However, I could also see a few dry parks building these instead of the Mac Power Splash coasters, as I assume that they'd be much cheaper than Mac's variation on the model. Next up is the Giga Splash, which is debatably not even a coaster. However, I would personally count it. This is essentially a single rail version of the Max Super Splash, in particular the model with the elevator lift. The ride has a basic layout with just a drop in an airtime hill, but the drop is 87 degrees so it should be insane compared to most water coasters, and the airtime hill also pulls minus 1g, which is absurd considering it is a water coaster. The most interesting part of the ride is the elevator lift, which rotates while ascending, very similar to Super Splash at Plops Land Upon. One potential problem is that this lift is so complex that it could cause some serious downtime issues, but then again, the Intamin water coasters already have elevator lifts, so Intamin would already be comfortable with them. This would be a great competitor to Max Super Splash model, but making it way more thrilling, and I could see some parks worldwide getting them if they don't have the room for a full-sized water coaster. Now onto the non-water coasters, and first off is a vertical LSM coaster, which is very similar to the Skyline Skywalk Eclipse, except it's gravity powered and utilises LSM launches. This model is actually very intriguing, as it shows that Intamin is trying to delve more into the compact swing launch coaster market. The elements on this coaster are really interesting. It starts off with some nice hang time, but then goes into the world's first inverted launch, which is something I could see being used on more coasters. The ride then goes into a torpedo dive which looks amazing, and another element that I could see being used on future Intamins. Just that second version alone on the element looks so whippy. The coaster then goes through a zigzag loop, which is essentially a non-inverting loop, except it twists later meaning that it actually inverts twice. So for being such a short ride, it features some great elements, and I see it as more of a showcase of what Intamin is willing to do, especially with the inverted launch. I've seen quite a few people complain how it's too similar to a Skyrocket 2, but it really isn't. It has its own unique elements, so while it has a similar idea to the Skyrocket 2's being fairly compact, the layout itself is fairly different. And anyways, it's not like other manufacturers haven't tried to imitate a Skyrocket 2 already. Finally is probably the most anticipated model, the Hot Racer, Intamin's take on a Raptor style single rail coaster. Like the RMC Raptors, it features single file trains, but other than that, they're fairly different. The restraints used are Intamin's new over the head lap bars, which is supposedly way more comfortable than the generally disliked Raptor restraints. And also the Hot Racer will feature launches. In this announcement, Intamin released three clonable layouts. The shortest, Infinity, which is dueling, Overdrive, which is a mid-sized variant, which only features one track, and then Autodrome, a massive dueling Quasimobius loop layout, similar in functionality to West Coast Racers. They all look really fun. But honestly compared to the Raptors they look fairly tamed, which is unfortunate since the Raptors are so loved because of their aggressive ride experience. But you never know, the animation might not do the hot racer justice. For me, the most interesting part of the animation was the new element, dubbed the wall ride dive, which is kind of like a wave turn but way steeper and it almost goes into an inversion. This element looks to provide some great airtime and it's so unique, and hopefully we see it built on some newer intimates. Overall, this community seems to have had a negative response to these new concepts as they aren't the most original. However, I don't mind. It's clear that the water coasters were made to compete with Mac, which is understandable. It definitely seems like the introduction of the new water coasters was directed at the Chinese market, as so many parks are being built there, and they all feature some kind of major water ride. While Intamin has seen some success in the Chinese market, especially with Sunak parks, only one of their water coasters has been built in China, which is Hydro at Zishuangbana Zunak Land. 
However, the Chinese park seemed to favour golden horseshoe rides and even Mack water coasters for their more compact and traditional design. Also, the Mack Power Splash seems to have had some success in Asia, with Lotta's Magic Forest in South Korea getting one, and Happy Valley Shenzhen also having one. So there is some demand for compact shuttle water coasters, so it makes sense for Intamin to also provide that product, since they already have a good reputation in China, so it would probably be more popular than Mack. As I mentioned previously, this could also be a suitable product for many water parks, so that is another market which selling coasters like these opens up. The other two models I'm guessing would also be successful in the Chinese market, especially for new parks opening up that want a headliner. I could see the vertical LSM coaster going to smaller parks which don't have the budget to get a larger scale Intamin Swing launch coaster, and I could potentially even see some additions of it worldwide. The vertical LSM concept also shows that Intamin is willing to do more daring elements that other manufacturers can't, and it might draw the attention of larger parks who might want a bigger scale launch coaster, but also with say an inverted launch. I highly doubt that the vertical LSM coaster will be built in the US, seeing as there are cheaper alternatives, but then again a compact LSM coaster, Sandy's Blasting Bronco, is opening up in Nickelodeon Universe in the American Dream Mall. As for the Hot Racer, it seems like it was made to be the headliner of parks, but for a cheaper cost, as the single rail coasters require less steel. I could see one of these opening up to be the headliner of some new Zunak Park in China, as the dueling single rail coaster is fairly marketable and unique, and Zunak Parks love diversity between their parks. However, I could also see this model spreading worldwide, but mostly in Europe. I could definitely see some Compania des Alpes parks getting them due to their close relationship with Intamin, with the most likely contenders probably being Wallaby Roan Alps receiving a smaller model, potentially the Infinity as they lack the size or budget for the larger ones, and I could also see Wallaby Holland receiving a larger custom dueling one as the park lacks a modern launch coaster, and it would also be unique to the very competitive market in the Benelux and Western Germany region. I could also see some independent parks receiving a hot racer, most likely Energylandia, as that park is just expanding like crazy, and I could see them either getting an autodrome or a larger custom model. Naturally, it would be dueling, as right now Energylandia is lacking a dueling coaster in their lineup, but honestly, my guess is that they'd get a custom model but actually with a lift hill as Energylandia is already fairly saturated with launch coasters. Jeu Sommerland is also another likely contender, due to their close relationship with Intamin, and I could honestly see them receiving any one of the layout variations, or even a custom layout, but other than that I'm not too sure. I doubt that many US parks will take much of an interest in the Hot Racer, as the RMC Raptors seem like a cheaper option for the US parks, and anyways, most US parks don't even have a good relationship with Intamin, but perhaps the SeaWorld Park could receive one, but in the distant future. Overall, I think it's a great move from Intamin releasing these models, and it's obvious that these concepts are mainly directed at the Asian market, since they were announced just 5 days before the 2020 IAPA Virtual Asian Expo. Each model has a particular purpose, and I could see all of them selling well, especially the Hot Racer. It's obvious that these concepts were developed for Intamin to get into markets that they weren't already in, and while none of these concepts are original, they all have a unique selling factor, and in general are more well executed than the models they are based off of. Except for the Hot Racer, these models weren't meant to be huge extreme headliners like their current LSM or Mega Coaster models are, but they were instead meant as supporting additions for parks to help build up their lineups. And seeing Intamin's success recently, I could see many parks purchasing from Intamin over say Mac or Premier rides. This announcement solidifies Intamin's dominating presence in the industry, as they are probably the most versatile manufacturer of amusement rides in general, and this helps just expand their already impressive portfolio. So, I like the look of these models, and cannot wait to see them get built. But I'd also love to hear your opinions on the recently announced concepts by Entman, as it seems to be a very controversial topic in the community right now. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you liked and subscribed.